Hydro Thunder is a speedboat racing game developed by Midway, released in arcades in 1999. It was also a launch title for the Sega Dreamcast, again in 99. In 2005, the Dreamcast version of the game was ported to the Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2 as part of the Midway Arcade Treasures 3 compilation disc. Today, we'll be looking at the Xbox version. I've been a fan of Hydro Thunder since 1999, picking it up early on in the Dreamcast's life cycle. Much like Sega in the 90s, Midway was quite successful in the arcades, with smash hits like Cruisin' USA and NFL Blitz quickly establishing themselves as household names. Also like Sega, Midway was not afraid to create new properties, and Hydro Thunder is a result of their desire to try new things. Hydro Thunder starts off, simple enough, with the option to select between three boats and three tracks. Being an arcade title, you'll be on the accelerator at all times, and your goal is to have a top three finish on the three easy courses to progress. The main gimmick of Hydro Thunder is the boosting. Littered throughout the courses are boost orbs. The blue ones add four seconds of boost to your boost meter, while the red ones add nine. Your goal is to determine where all of these boost orbs are and chart a course through the tracks allowing you to maintain your boost the longest. Additionally, you also have a boost jump. Quickly hitting the brakes and then the boost without hitting the accelerator will allow you to jump. This actually sounds much easier to perform than in practice, but the easy courses don't require you to master this maneuver. However, you'll soon discover shortcuts that can only be achieved with the jumping. Boosting aside, Hydro Thunder features some excellent controls. The steering is responsive and the boat moves realistically and predictably across the changing wave patterns of the water. Longer boats are more stable but lack the cornering ability of the stubbier crafts. It's a nice trade-off and makes experimenting with all of the boats a lot of fun. The real genius of Hydro Thunder are the tracks and overall presentation. The easy courses are extremely varied, with Thunder Park having a stadium-style aesthetic, Lost Islands having a Pacific Island vibe, and Arctic Circle featuring plenty of ice-themed gimmicks. Completing these should be fairly trivial, and unlocks three medium courses and three new boats. For me, this medium section of the game is the sweet spot of Hydro Thunder. The difficulty is just right, requiring a mastery of the controls along with memorization of the courses and boost locations, but allows you to make a minor misstep here or there without ruining your race. In addition to needing to finish in second place or better to complete the track, these medium courses feature a much higher level of difficulty, both in their layout as well as their reliance on the boost jump mechanic. Lake Powell just might be my favorite racetrack of any game of all time. Right away, the course features a nice 9 second boost by hitting a ramp you're sure to miss on the first time through. From here to the end, you'll be in a boost state at nearly all times if you manage to take the correct path through the track. This includes finding shortcuts through waterfalls, boost jumping to nab midair boosts, and even ramping off a dam to nab a cool red boost located on a train track high in the air. It's an absolute rush from start to finish, further enhanced by the excellent presentation. Hydro Thunder is a good looking game. While the polygon models are starting to show their age, the game is still very colorful with an oversaturated palette helping the game look visually appealing. On top of this, the tracks feature an absurd amount of variety. A single track will have you venturing all over a given locale, from wide open expanses to tight corridors complete with weather changes, altering the lighting of each section, again adding to the variety. After finishing in the top two of each medium track, the hard tracks and boats become available. As expected, the difficulty is pretty intense. The hard boats feature a higher top speed and better acceleration, at the expense of some twitchy controls. I actually find myself sticking with the medium boats for these courses, as they offer the best blend of speed and agility. The hard courses are every bit as creative as the ones preceding it. New York Disaster has us race through New York City, after it has been crashed into by a meteorite. Not only is the city underwater, complete with taxi cabs visible under the water, you'll actually see the meteorite before racing through flooded subway tunnels. This is also a good time to talk about the water effects in general. Like the graphics, the water is definitely showing its age and doesn't look as realistic as it did 16 years ago, but it is still solid overall. The color of the water changes with each location, from deep blues to murky green, pristine clear, and everything in between. 
Midway did a fantastic job making sure something as simple as water always feels unique. Not only does the water change color, but the transparency isn't always the same. Sometimes you can see clear down to the floor. Other times you don't see much at all. And of course, the water is always moving from six foot waves to calm. The water surface is always changing and dramatically alters how your speedboat feels. Last but certainly not least is the sound. Being an arcade title, Hydro Thunder is a loud game. The music is epic and well produced, making every single race feel like the adventure it is. There are plenty of ambient sounds too, from waterfalls, police sirens, and even your character yelling wahoo as it falls down massive cliffs. Hydro Thunder always sounds larger than life. Even better are the engine notes. These range from American sounding V8s to jet aircrafts and even noises out of this world, and really adds to the overall presentation of the game. For all of the wonderful things Hydro Thunder does right, there is one glaring flaw. The game is difficult, and at times feels unfairly so. On the hard courses, hitting every boost, locating every shortcut, and racing through every turn perfectly isn't always enough, and you'll be repeating the same course for hours on end, trying to figure out what on earth you could possibly be missing. While I was able to finish first on New York Disaster, I was not as successful on Venice Canals or Ship Graveyard, and I haven't been able to replicate the success I had when the game was new. Still, extreme difficulty aside, Hydro Thunder is a terrific game. While this Xbox port offers absolutely nothing over the Dreamcast original, it is a must-own if you missed out on the game the first time around. The fantastic gameplay, creative tracks, colorful graphics, epic sound, and smooth gameplay add up to one of the better racing games of the past 20 years. 4 out of 5.